You're listening to Compete Sports Radio Network. Welcome to Compete Radio. I'm your host, Josh Fourier. We're here with Buddy Early with the news, Eric Carlisle with Hot Topics and Interviews, Connie Wardman with Ask Connie, and Alfonso is on vacation this week. But right into news, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Buddy, what's going on? Yeah, this week's news is brought to you by the good, the bad, and the ugly. I thought of a few different <laughs> sports uh, news items that fall into these categories, so let's get to it. Um, the good, Tim Tebow. Uh, now, Tim Tebow is the classic good guy. I mean, he doesn't cuss, he doesn't drink, he helps old ladies across the street, he builds houses for the poor. Um, so it's good to see him succeeding in the NFL. Tim Tebow, who a lot of people thought, oh, this guy's never going to make it in the NFL. He, he's the greatest college football player ever, but his his style of playing will not translate to the NFL. Everyone said that. Almost everyone. I didn't. There but you go. But he wins again. Halfway through the season, Tim Tebow is, is proving all of his doubters wrong. Uh, he recently passed for his first NFL touchdown, and he, in the last month, has run for three touchdowns. Who's, which, who's he playing with, buddy? The Denver Broncos. Okay. And a lot of people thought, well, he won't even get any playing time. He's not their number one quarterback. They didn't even know what they were going to do with him. Was he going to be a backup quarterback? Would he play tailback or, or fullback? Uh, maybe they put him in at tight end. You know, who knows what. But people like myself and others, I'm not going to say I'm the only one who thought he had a chance, uh, really thought, Tim Tebow's a winner. You know, he's won at every level. He does whatever it takes to to help his team get a victory. And I just knew that Tim Tebow was going to uh, do something. He's going to find a way to help his team win, and he's been doing that. Now the team's not really winning. They're th- they're three and six right now, um, but Tim Tebow is contributing, and uh, so that's that's good to see. Uh, it's nice to see a nice guy get ahead. Exactly. Is his hair grown out yet, buddy? Since the hazing, it it is. Oh, that was unfortunate. That was an unfortunate <laughs> hazing. Uh, haircut they gave him we did the same thing here to josh in the studio just so you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's very unfortunate the band-aids have come off now by the way yeah. um skin's healing over yeah. <laughs> let's move on to the bad because i know that's what you're waiting for uh the bad is greg odin center occasional center for the portland trailblazers um it, i don't know if any of you remember greg odin he was uh, just a heralded college basketball player who uh, was drafted three years ago by the Portland Trailblazers, number one overall in the draft. Um, you might remember him because he was the, the freshman who played for Ohio State who had a full beard and just looked like a 45-year-old man, and a lot of people actually thought maybe he was. But it, this is his fourth season in the league now, and this week he went out with another knee injury. So he's going to have knee surgery for the third time, microfact- oh, boy. microfracture surgery. That doesn't sound good. And <laughs> he missed his entire rookie season. Before the season even started, he went out with a knee injury and missed that entire season. Came back and played uh, most of the next season. Uh, went out last December for the season. And now he's out again for this entire season. So he's played 82 games and has missed 176 Oh my um, in the games he has played, he's averaged 9.4 points and 7.3 rebounds, which is decent, but that's not for not, a number one. That's not big over. for an NBA. Well, those those star, are those it? are decent numbers. Um, you know, the Suns would like to have a center who who averages those. Oh, we're not talking about Tim Tebow anymore. No. <laughs> okay, I missed that Greg part. Odin. Okay. Different, <laughs> and, different um, ball But this is married to the Kardashian chick, correct? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> The reason why this is so bad is, first of all, it's bad. Greg Oden's career might as well be over. The reason why it's so bad is he was the number one pick coming out of college, and there was this debate over who should go number one, Greg Oden or Kevin Durant. And uh, the Trailblazers (laughs) took Greg Oden, and at the time, what was the Seattle Supersonics, now they're the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder, got Kevin Durant, who is a future... MVP in the league, and it just reminds you of 1984, not the book, 
Okay. Um, Connie, I was going to say George Orwell wasn't, wasn't um, dribbling George down Orwell, the court, was he? May have, if he had seen this coming, he could have saved the Trailblazers <laughs> a lot of uh, heartache. Because in 1984, uh, the number two overall pick in the draft was a guy by the name of Sam Bowie who is also considered one of the biggest busts that's, that's in the history. That's a familiar name. Of yeah, the but league. I couldn't figure out why. The reason he's considered such a bust is because the guy who went number 3 that year, right behind Sam Bowie, you want to take a guess on who that was? I actually know that one. Who was it, Eric? Oh. That was cuz I just I, I have some a lot of NBA friends who were just talking about the other, Michael Jordan. Exactly. So, and, and wow, to I'm add impressed. insult to injury, the team that took Sam Bowie number two, the Portland Trailblazers. <laughs> so this is twice now they've been burned with a top pick, and uh, that's ended up being I one of the biggest I think maybe busts. they need to have their crystal ball cleaned. It's not working <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, it clearly you is You were the top pick for this job, buddy, just so you know. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't even give thing. you a haircut. And I, 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 I won't tell you who was number two. But I, it was, uh, <laughs> I, we'll see Michael if I've turned Jordan. out to Anna be Anna Wintour a, was our number two choice. Who? Anna Wintour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, then I, By those standards, I may have turned out to be a bust like Greg Oden and Sam Bowie. <laughs> who knows? Okay, you guys ready to get to the ugly? Oh, yeah. Yes. <gasps> the, the best part. Bring it on. Yeah, the, everyone wants to know. The, the ugly is Antonio Margarito. <clears throat> Sounds who? like a drink with an umbrella. Alfon- <clears throat> if Alfonso was not on vacation, he would know who Antonio Margarito is. Excuse me. <clears throat> well, um, Alfonso does know who he is. Um, he just lost a fight to Manny Pacquiao last uh, oh, weekend. Oh, okay. Um, in a unanimous decision, <clears throat> the ref stopped the fight in the 11th round. <clears throat> Excuse me. By which time, both of Margarito's eyes were swollen shut oh, and his my. face beaten to a bloody pulp. Um, three days after the boxing match, Margarito underwent surgery on his fractured right orbital, orbital bone, which is uh, his, basically his That's right eye That's what holds socket. your eyeball in. Yeah. So this is ugly, not just because his face was all torn up. He also needed stitches in a couple places. It's ridiculous. Um, it's, the whole There's sport of boxing, be... I just don't get. I don't either. And, you know, professional wrestling has such a – a reputation for being staged, but boxing is just mean and ugly. Well, yeah, I don't understand. And Alfo- if Alfonso was here, he could maybe shed some insight because I know he follows boxing and ultimate fighting. Um, and in ultimate fighting, they don't That's... injure each other in the same way. I mean, people don't go to the hospital and have permanent brain damage mm-hmm. by doing ultimate fighting. But this idea that you go into a ring and beat the crap out of someone until they have to go to the hospital, and that's a sport. Um, is just very um, unusual, in my opinion. I, I, I still it. think it goes back to the Roman days with, you know, throwing the gladiators out there, and it's blood sport. That's exactly. what I think whenever I see that. that well, you're, you're absolutely, yeah. yeah. Well, I saw some jello wrestling once, and that stuff is mm. torrid. I've I mean, done jello out. wrestling before. Yeah, you talk about nasty and mean. You, right. Yeah, it takes you a while <laughs> to get rid of all that jello. Right. You, you get have, some of that jello, and you're like, you get a mm. cut, and some of the jello gets in the stain, yeah. and it starts burning. And, oh, that oh I did it. Is that why you turned yellow that day? <laughs> I've done that a couple of times, and let me tell you, you have green jello coming out of orifices for a couple of weeks that you, you know. You're it's here. not antifreeze. It is not cute. Um, the other problem I have with boxing yes. is I have kind of an issue with any quote, I'm making air quotes right now in case you can't, <laughs> sport w- that is decided by judges. Um, and it doesn't mean, I, I, yes, I watch figure skating and I love to watch gymnastics and it's, you know, very artistic and, and diving and I love all of those things. But in the back of my mind, at the end of the day, um, and any other cliche I might want to add, <laughs> it's still people scoring you. And, and that's how they determine a winner. And I have kind of a fundamental issue with that in, in any sport where you ha- you're at the whim of judges. That's why Except I- that in boxing, I think it's good to have them there because <laughs> who the heck would stop it? <laughs> that's I mean, point. you know, they'd wind up killing somebody. Oh, I'm not saying not have a judge. We'll be announcing our 2010 Athlete of the Year in the very near future that was scored by some great judges, by the way. <laughs> Which, But our Athlete of the Year contest is not a sport. I mean, my point is, uh, you know, someone is declared a winner or given a gold medal or given, you know, a purse of $1.5 million based on some people saying, I yeah. think he was the best. Goes or she back to did those, the best job. So, those bad old days of the Russian judges on exactly. ice skating. And it doesn't mean, again, it doesn't mean I teams. don't like these, quote, sports, like gymnastics and diving. It's just I 
always keep in the back of my mind that these are sports that are determined by people sitting behind a table. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not every sport can be as pure as, you know, a foot race from A to B. Um, And, yeah, you have referees in a lot of sports who kind of, you know, they'll call penalties. They'll say, no, you were out of bounds. You know, oh, that that shot was not a three-pointer, that kind of thing. But to finish a boxing match and then say, okay, judges, turn in your score sheets, and, and that's the winner. It's, it's just kind of a fundamental issue I have. But you can't do anything about it. That is the sport. Yeah, a lot of people love it, though. And then, they really do. See, it's I'm a not, big deal. I don't deal. have as much of a problem with boxing because, it, I mean, it's legit as I do. Well, like. Oh, good. I'm so glad, Josh. I was totally worried they might stop boxing because of you. <laughs> I know. Well, that's the thing. But wrestling, like yeah. th- these fake wrestling, and people get so obsessed with this sport. Um, <laughs> he was doing air quotes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and everybody knows it's fake, but they still try and call it a sport. And I think legally, didn't they have to change the name of... There, that was, I think it was probably somewhere in the 90s when there were some uh, legal issues. And finally, the sport, sport, again, air quotes, of boxing said, you know what? We're going to go ahead and call ourselves World Wrestling Entertainment. And they basically tell everyone, yeah, this is a show. Now there's no... If someone goes to a, you it's know, like a Madonna a, concert, right? If, exactly. It, no, it is. What? If someone goes to a WrestleMania and thinks what they're seeing the is costumes real, the just aren't as good. That's not the fault of the WWE anymore because they they make no bones about the fact that it's all staged and it's a story and it's a soap opera. Well, you can see how closely I follow that. If that happened back in the nineties, <laughs> when I was a kid in the eighties, oh, I I was into that World Wrestling Federation. Every Saturday morning, ravishing Rick Rude. I wanted to <laughs> Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan, yeah, they were, they million I, dollar I, man, I, King Haku. When I was little, two centuries ago, I remember this was a big deal, and I came from Western Pennsylvania. They had Bruno San Martino, who was this Hulk of a guy. He could have he could have done the Hulk. And it was big stuff back yeah. then. It was uh, even even back in your day, Connie. Yeah, they didn't have the uh, the he flashy needs to be names. Be careful, and or I'm going to hit him with my water. The flashy names and costumes <laughs> and all that. It was just you know Joe Smith, but you knew right. who Joe Smith was, and he was a, a villain or he was a good guy and that kind of thing. Exactly. I, I have a little I have a little trivia on Lou Ferrigno. Those of you that are interested. Uh, Speaking of the Incredible Hulk, yeah. Th- thank you for that, buddy. <laughs> the segue know what I'm was great. <laughs> um. Many of you know that Compete is based in Tempe, Arizona, even though we're nationwide. Um, but we have Sheriff Joe Arpaio here. Um, oh. I think he's pretty famous, oh, right, around Lordy. the U.S. A lot of people know him. We have Joe him Ar- here in our studio? No, no, we have him here in Arizona. Oh, oh right, right, right. right. Any of he's you the pink underwear pink guy. Pink underwear will know him. He actually formed a celebrity immigration posse yesterday. No. Yes, he and did. And Lou Ferrigno is on the celebrity nice. immigration. And, and who's the, <laughs> the uh, guy from down in Louisiana that's the martial artist? Yeah, that Stephen uh, Segal uh, is on it, right? Yeah. Stephen Segal oh, is man. on that so as well. So two huge celebrities from the <laughs> 70s and 80s are, are, are quote on, It's like the celebrity apprentice. It's the celebrity immigration <laughs> posse. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure we should get Bravo We're not as on forward that. as California in many <laughs> things, but I don't know that they have a celebrity posse. Wow. Scary. The, you you were actually serious when you said that. I just looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> it, yes, it was on the news this morning. Oh, look, it's Hollywood on Fox Star. News. On Fox. Steven Seagal. Yes. Whatever happened. That proves I actually watched the news. For those I'm, who wait, doubted I'm me. waiting for RuPaul to join his posse. <laughs> that... I think so. Come in nice maybe morning. maybe he could go on drag you. Or Pio, I mean. <laughs> What's coming up next? What's coming up next? <laughs> coming up next, Eric with Hot Topics. Woo! Compete Sports Radio Network. Hey, it's Josh Fourier, host of Compete Radio. I'm hanging out with Jay. He's our engineer here at the show. I don't know about you, Jay, but I love CompeteRadio.com. Yeah, I do too, Josh. Compete Radio, it's always up to date, and it's one of the more informative sites out there for gay sports. I really love how I can just log on to the site and browse sports news stories and hot topics while instantly streaming our most recent show. That's true. CompeteRadio.com, it's by far my main source for anything gay sports. Hey, if you're listening, why don't you go check it out? CompeteRadio.com. That's CompeteRadio.com. What are you waiting for? Log on now. CompeteRadio.com. You're listening to Compete Sports Radio Network.
Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Josh Fourier. Eric with Hot Topics. Eric Carlisle, basketball, baseball, transgendered <laughs> athletes. What's going on in Hot Topics? Well, just so you know, I'm an M2M transsexual. Oh. Um, just want to get that out there. Um, it's, a new, it's a new classification. I wondered. That means he's trying to cut out trans fats in his diet to, to be more manly. I was so glad when McDonald's quit using beef tallow. I mean, you have no idea. Um, okay. We are going to talk about a hot topic. Um, I was checking out the Compete uh, news updates on the website at competeradio.com. Click on Compete Network at that site, right. and you will find a article or a blog that Mr. Buddy Early, our beautiful editor-in-chief here, um, who's not good, bad, or ugly. He's whatever beautiful? is the opposite. I think I'm pretty yeah. good. Okay. I was going to say great. You're, you're Thank great. Thank you. Um, Didn't they write that on a restroom wall somewhere? He wrote an article, a little blog, and I'm sure he knows a lot about this. Obviously, he wrote it on is – it, is it Kai Alums? Kai Alums. Yes. And that is a male. That's a uh, yeah, that's a male to female, right? N- no. Okay. I, you know what? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Kai Alums is a, a basketball player for the George Washington uh, basketball team. George Washington, of course, a university in <coughs> D.C. Um, he is a biological female. Okay, uh, that's what I meant. I, yeah, I, I, I was confused. I don't know what, what you call them. <laughs> female to male. Okay, yeah, okay. Female to male, but has not has not started any kind of hormone therapy or surgery to transition, but identifies as a right. as a male. So at this point, um this young person um is identifying as a male, biologically female, but it's it's kind of the whole gender identity thing at this point. But uh sh- he is is allowed to play on the George Washington women's basketball team because he's Three biologically for female. Them. But here's the thing, Connie, really because to me is is athletics, is it emotional or is it physical? Because if it's emotional, then a transgendered person should be comfortable playing on the team if they're, you know, if, if, if they identify as that sex. But if it's more physical, then if it's someone's a transitional transgendered person, it's really not, it's really not the same thing. Yeah, but you know, he hasn't I, started the, he hasn't changed hormones, hasn't had sex reassignment surgery. Right. This is still... Uh, a female body with female chemistry. Yeah. At this point, it's no different, to, and not to make light of this situation no. because this comparison is is not going to be fair. But when it gets right down to it, this is no different than you know, Josh is out of the office, and you say, "Hey, where's Josh?" And I say, "Oh, she had to go get her nails done." You know, because it's just <laughs> pronoun Lovely, usage. By the way, it's just Josh. pronoun usage. <laughs> Um, but I mean, this this person identifies as male and believes that she was born as a male in, in the wrong body. She got put in the wrong body. Yeah, uh, okay. but so, biologically, but, she pl- he plays with the females because that's what he is currently uh, by biological standards. Okay, okay. So take like a Renee Richards. Then is that someone who completed the surgery? Right? Yes. So that is so. But so that's a male physical male body playing in a women's sport, right? No, Renee Richards. I'm totally off on this today because I. Yeah, Renee Richards was a a man who transitioned to a woman and got declined to play for as a, as a woman. Um, I think there. I think it, ultimately she was able to play. Just wasn't a great player. Yeah, that's what I meant though. So it was a okay. it was a male body and in it was true. It was a male physical body with a female mind playing on a female no, sport. No, she, no. Well, I mean, when you say tra- when you said he had the surgery, but I mean, still the muscles are male, the arms are male. But, but it's the Take hormones it away, that that really <laughs> that really create the chemical balance in your body and and the way your muscles work. And so, if you're taking all of this estrogen to become a woman, like Renee Richards did, it it changes your musculature over the over the time i'm not a doctor and you know i'm sure we'll get some kind of comment back on this sure. and so shame on me if i've said something wrong uh mea culpa in advance but i think that um once you change the hormones the body chemistry then that's what makes the original change and i think that's the problem with with this female body who wants to play who on a female team, you know, well, but inter- identifies as male. I think what's so interesting is that we all have a different concept on, like, what it means to be a transgender person. Because to me, it's like, is it a man before and a woman after? Is it Chaz Bono and Chastity Bono? And, you know, Buddy's, like, got this down, the, what he believes, because, I mean, there's no getting around. In your like, heart, if I mind, and soul, man, you, so- you know who you are. You know who you are at the very depths of your character. You just feel you were dropped in the wrong body. 
But it's hard for me. But, but what I'm saying is, there's some people I, like Buddy and you who get that, and people like me who like. But I also can't. get exactly what you're saying because yeah. it is it is it's a confusing. difficult topic when you're talking about you know someone who identifies as transgender but has not had any uh, hormones or transitioning surgery because there's what do you do for example someone who identifies as the other sex and then wants to use that restroom because that happens mm-hmm. you read stories about that but they're still biologically the one sex but they want to use the the, who cares what the other gender uses. it's there's a lot oh, there of, are a lot of people who are very uptight about that there's a lot of complex i mean i don't know if i would want you know a biological female in the men's room i mean you know but in his it mind ma- it would make those troughs kind of uh kind of hard to use wouldn't it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well Here's my question, and, and Buddy, I think you would be the first to know the the answer. But what is the point? The way you know sports, uh, you know the way the teams are set up currently. Why are they set up by gender now? Well, I God, okay, it's a separate but equal kind of. Send right? your letters to Buddy at CompeteNetwork.com <laughs> <laughs> because there's a difference in skill level in in. Pretty it, much every it goes sport. back to musculature again. Right, but they're, so, they're, they're like built varsity. differently, and so they operate differently, and they have different strength levels. You know, certainly, you know, Allison Felix, who's you know one of the fastest sprinters in the world, can outrun me, uh-huh. and Lisa Leslie could beat me in basketball. I mean, you know, there's plenty of those examples. But on the whole, men are faster, stronger. Uh, can jump further, higher, you know, all of that things, and and I don't see a problem with. I mean, you, if you want to say, let's have men and women, boys and girls, all play together on the same teams, I, I just don't see that leading to anything good. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I think unfortunately our country is not anywhere near being progressive enough to entertain the idea of the transgendered approach within mainstream sports. We can't even give everyone health care. What How next? Will they allow dogs tackle? to play on the teams? I mean, that's what I mean. I don't mean that, obviously. Is that, I do. Is that the, the, the slippery slope? Is that what we're doing? Yeah. yeah. It's very. But I mean, that really complicates it. I don't think people, you know, give the time of day to really understand transgendered. Well, th- they don't and, get homosexuality. How are right. they going to get transgender? I, right. I don't necessarily get transgender, you really? know, and right. I'm a homosexual. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's hard thing to wrap your mind around, just as you know, someone who. May, just cannot fathom the idea of being attracted to a member of the same sex. But, I cannot fathom someone who wants to change their gender. I mean, you just can't wrap your mind around it sometimes. As, as, as open-minded as you can be, you get to a wall at some point where you're like, that, I could never understand that. Well, it's almost oh. like, gosh, I get the number three combo every time. There's no way I'm going to get the number four, gosh. even though it's only a little bit different. You have a way of distilling <laughs> things down to an you, Most of it comes <laughs> around food. Have you noticed that? Back to the beef in, talent? In, in, in all seriousness, this is the ultimate point that I was trying to make, is that with sports the way everything is now, it's black and white. Men's team, women's team. End of discussion. No opinion needed. It is the way it is, male, female. But then whenever you start, just as we've been able to display at this table in this discussion, everyone mm-hmm. has their own take and own opinion of what exactly. trans- transgendered actually right. is and means and how and what and physical or emotional. And when you start now asking for everyone's opinion regarding what is this, is it really male, is it really female, into a, a – for history, it's been black and white. I mean, it's been the teams are the way they are. There's no discussion about it. Male, female, that's it. You know, and, I I bet somewhere along the line in centuries past, though, this has had this has half. It has to come up. It you know, I think they just haven't recorded it. Well, the technology. I don't. I mean, was that really there to be able to adjust hormones and? And, you know, body structure in the past as far as how yeah. people felt. Well, certainly not to the degree we're doing it today. You but never saw any of those French dudes I, in the outfits, did you? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I don't even think it's simply technology, you know, and, and medical technology. I right. think a lot of it is psychological advances to mm-hmm. understand. Yes. I'm sure centuries ago there were people who thought, I wish I was born the opposite gender. Absolutely. But no one could... There was no studies, no research, no one to explain to them that what they were thinking was actually a real thing. Well, mm-hmm. but, buddy, that is your opinion, and I happen to agree with you in your opinion. But I disagree. There weren't gay parents back then, <laughs> therefore there were no gay children. <laughs> oh, my. Thank you for that moment of illumination. I don't know why I never thought of that before. Must be because I'm blonde. 
Yeah, it's, I don't know, the whole opinion aspect of it is what is going to cause the controversy because, I mean, I think that if there is someone that, that, you know, identifies as female, they should be able to be a part of a female team. But there are plenty of people that would, of course, completely disagree with that. And I would disagree females, with that. Right. <laughs> females included. I mean, it's just, it's all a matter of opinion. Well, yeah, because, I know we're running out of time, but like someone like a, uh, Cheryl Swoops could never, could never reach her full potential if she was stuck on a team with men because she would have never had the, the chance to excel to the degree that she did because... Right. Yeah. And what's so weird Here's about it is the, the sports... She also said the basketball player, by the way. Yes. The sports subject matter is so petty in the big picture because the reality is these people just want to feel normal. They just want to Absolutely. be who they are and they can't do that in today's world. And that is ultimately what's so sad about all of it. But we need to take a break. Uh, and I have a story about Josh when we get back, if I can uh, tell it. No stories about it. Please. <laughs> we'll take a Stay break cute. and we'll be right back with a little more after this. Stay with us. Compete Sports Radio Network. Hey there, Compete fans. This is Jay. I'm your engineer here at Compete Radio, and I'm here with Josh, the host of Compete Radio. And you know, Josh, I'm always having trouble trying to figure out what to get my friends and family for Christmas. Well, Jay, I understand. Here's what I'm doing. Annual subscriptions of Compete Magazine with groundbreaking articles and your monthly dose of hot guys. How could everyone in your life not love Compete Magazine? Wow, I cannot believe I didn't even think of that. And right now, subscriptions are two for one, and they're only nineteen ninety five. So That's right. Hey, listeners, take advantage of this special holiday offer. Log on to CompeteRadio.com. Click on subscribe. That's CompeteRadio.com. Click on subscribe. Two for one subscription and our promo code radio. You're listening to Compete Sports Radio Network. Welcome back to Compete Radio with Buddy Early, Eric Carlisle, Connie Wardman, and me, Josh. Fourier, and we're uh, we have a lot going on this month. I mean, the holidays. You're are not going to get out of my story, Josh. No <laughs> don't, please do. don't make me do this. No, I don't want to hear the story. You look lovely this, in red. I, and, and, yeah. I, and, and Jay, our, our uh, engineer, is like waving at me to hurry up, so I'll be quick. Mm. Um, we're always getting calls from great superstar athletes around the world because Compete is the central location if you're interested in gay sports, uh, just like com- uh, CompeteRadio.com is. Um, and we got an interesting message from the. Uh, is it the coyote, uh, Josh? Co- the coyotes. The coyotes. Okay. <laughs> oh, long story behind Ooh, lesson that. Lesson one. The coyotes. And yeah. they are so excited. Josh knows some people over at the coyotes, and if, and and they've invited us to do some, hopefully, do some projects with them this year. Absolutely. And Josh turns and goes, "Oh, I just talked to the coyotes. What sport is that?" <laughs> <laughs> you're taking. You're taking. Now, see. Eric, you know, this is ultimately your fault. You're taking someone that has done a, po- a political talk show and thrown them into this crazy <laughs> sports world and expecting me to know what the hell is going on. For our listeners, uh, the Phoenix Coyotes are a hockey team. Hockey. So, See, I, yeah, buddy, I, I could are local sad. hockey team people. <laughs> buddy, I totally could have answered that now. I'm, oh, I'm I, sorry. I, I, I want to put you on the spot again in case you forgot. <laughs> of course. That's because Eric was throwing ice cubes at him as a hint. Speaking, I, I, they're making me shut up now, people, so I'll go away. <laughs> Speaking of local events, Josh, we have one coming up in Orlando. Uh, no, I'm sorry, in Fort Lauderdale um, over Thanksgiving weekend that I wanted to let our listeners know about. It's the 16th annual Hurricane Showdown softball tournament. Uh, the Ooh. folks in Fort Lauderdale with the South Florida Amateur Athletic Association uh, have been doing this for, uh, like I said, 16 years. They always do it Thanksgiving weekend, and they have an orphan's dinner for people who are in out of town, fr- uh, from out of town, uh, who come in early for Thanksgiving. And our really good friends at Sideline Sports Bar in Fort Lauderdale host uh, these people and uh, show great. people a great time. I went a couple years ago and had a really wonderful time. Uh, the people in Fort Lauderdale really know how to uh, be hospitable hospitable uh, <laughs> during that time. So just wanted to give them a plug before we run out of time here. Will the Coyotes be there playing softball as well? The Coyotes will be there uh, playing uh, lacrosse, I think. Oh, lacrosse yeah. this time. Okay. <laughs> Okay, perfect. We'll see him learning. Curling, yeah. maybe. Yeah. yeah. Men, women, and transgenders all together. <laughs> Wonderful. What, what John's a be- holding what up a, a dart word. asking what this is. That's a dart, Josh. That's a dart. Do what? I didn't, I didn't hear you. What what, did you? you just held something up to ask us what it was. That's a dart. Just <laughs> Oh, oh. See, but it's a process here. No, I am, I'm absorbing the information. I'm learning so. But we thank you so much for listening. And I am Josh Fourier. Again, this was Buddy Early with the news. Thank you very much for updating us on what's going on for the week. Eric Carlisle, always interesting. Hot topics, always interesting. (laughs) Connie Wardman with the resident straight lady, always her her opinion. 
Good and bad. Great perspectives. <laughs> Log on to CompeteRadio.com. We have all of the information we spoke about on the show today, as well as much more. That's CompeteRadio.com.